Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask Cheeky. I'm Isaiah Henkel with Cheeky Scientist. And this week's question comes from Paul Kurychok. Uh, hi, I'm a PhD student studying cancer biology and looking to work in industry after I graduate. Uh, what are some of the largest differences between being a bench scientist in academia uh, versus being a research scientist in industry? Uh, especially the differences that PhDs uh, in academia might not be aware of. So I think this is a great question. Really, I think it just comes down to um, a few different factors, right? We could talk about, you know, you, you'll be getting more emails, having more meetings, of course. Uh, but in industry, uh, your promotion is is based off of performance, right? That's the first thing. And this is not always the case in academia, right, where performance can be based in large part on seniority uh, or, or who you know, right, um, how, how often you've published. Uh, whatever it might be. In industry, it's based off of performance. So you get into a research scientist position, and if you perform well, you will be promoted very quickly. Uh, and this, this is why you can see people with a master's degree or a bachelor's degree at some of the same positions as people with PhDs, uh, because they perform better. But if you're a PhD who goes into these roles and you perform very well, you will be promoted quickly. Uh, so, so that's something that matters. And, and also, your performance is being tracked very closely. You're not just having a meeting every six months with your thesis committee you know, whose conclusions are always pretty vague, uh, but you're having uh, uh, measured progress reports uh, that, that are happening on a weekly basis. You have a manager that's helping you perform well and making sure that you're hitting these benchmarks. You're having, you know, your six months review, review your, your annual review, and again, that measured progress is laid out before you. You know exactly what your goals are, uh, what, exactly what the benchmarks are that you need to hit, uh, and so there's a lot more clarity in industry. Uh, also, uh, your environment is much more supportive. There's a lot more teamwork. So in, in academia, sometimes there can be a little bit too much independence. Uh, you, you can feel alone, uh, like you don't really know what you're doing. Your project's left to you. Uh, and when you try to get feedback, it, it, again, it can be very vague. This doesn't happen in industry. People really do work as a team. They have team goals, team benchmarks, uh, team reviews, right? The departments, these teams have managers that are, that, that are involved and want to help you get something done. They don't just say, I'm going to, you know, give you some of my reagent or give you some time in the cold room or whatever it might be, uh, they're going to make sure that you get your tasks done because it affects their tasks and then there's much more unity, which is why interviewers and employers are going to evaluate you on um, your interpersonal skills, your transferable skills. Uh, so, so keep this in mind when you work in industry, there, there are a lot of benefits and uh, you will be working more as a team and your performance will be evaluated better and you'll be rewarded also for initiative, right? So if you initiate a new project, uh, you're going to be rewarded for that. If you opt help optimize a workflow or, or save the company time or save your manager, your boss time, you're going to be rewarded for that. In academia, it can seem like you're only re rewarded if you save money or do less sometimes. Uh, not, not, it's not the case in industry. Uh, so keep these things in mind when you're deciding whether or not to stay in academia or transition to, into industry. And until next time, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.